Eons ago, mankind first emerged from the darkness of ignorance. explosion. There is but one place where it can be harnessed, the library. But keeping pace with today's world requires new ways of thinking about the library, new ways of dealing with its community, a new kind of librarian. Training the new librarian is the job of educators like George Evans, Associate Dean of UCLA's Library Science School. In addition to being a, uh, a librarian today, a person working in the library has to perform a lot of different jobs. Has to be an administrator, have to know public relations, they have to be part social worker, part educator, uh, part sociologist. A little bit of everything. A good storyteller doesn't hurt. Uh, knowing something about media, films, records, slides, all come into the library in one way or another, and most librarians have to know something about all of these things. We have the problem of overcoming the stereotype of the individual who becomes a librarian. The image of the librarian is changing. Though, unfortunately, the buildings often remain the same. The Mexican-American community of this inner city library is the focus of a new kind of library function. No longer waiting for the public to come in, this library reaches out to the community, largely through the efforts of head librarian, Hermia Justice. Most of these people want to learn English, and these people, all of them have preschool children, and the fact that we have produced a program which involves both the mothers as well as the children, the program has become a successful thing here. One of the greatest assets to this library in terms of community outreach has been the employment of a community aid. Cora Viega is Mrs. Justice's dynamic community aid. <gasps> She's able to communicate with people, and only through this communication have we been able to get these programs started and the people involved. I have eight children. Eight children? Eight children. How many children attend classes here? The children come in and learn English as well through the use of bilingual storytelling hours and through the use of the Sesame Street program and games and books and toys. <laughs> Many people have hang-ups about library use. Sometimes they feel as if they're not educated well enough to use a library, which is a bad reason because that's what it is. Hermia Justice has found new ways to reach out to people. People who are still amazed to learn that the books, records, and films are free and that the library can be a swinging place. Onward. Is the 
kisil awal wakikmal. What's wakikmal? Wakikmal, it's a bird. bird. The revolution in audiovisual equipment has spurred librarians like Dave Gutman to reach out even further to people cut off from the mainstream of life. I remember the old people, you know. That was Mr. Blacktooth. Mr. Blacktooth, Mr. Arlingwish, Sibby Mort, and other men. Those were the, the chiefs, you might as well say, you know. Along with his assistant, Dave Gutman travels in his unique media mobile which contains videotape, motion picture projection, and tape recording equipment. He covers the back roads of Southern California. His mission, to tune into society people who have long been tuned out. One of Gutman's projects has been to videotape an oral history of local tribes. Now, the priceless recollection of an old tribal matriarch will stir in these children a sense of pride in their heritage. And those I can remember. I remember the old people, you know. That was Mr. Blacktooth. Mr. Blacktooth, Mr. Arlingwish, Sibby Mort. and other men. Here, in one of the largest circulating branch libraries in the country, the librarian faces a different challenge. Leslie Wiseman explains. I think one of the greatest challenges is actually reaching the junior and senior high school students. We have been going to the various classes in the junior and senior high schools and talking about the resources, the materials that are available, the programs that we have planned. And we've recruited a number of volunteers for some of our participation programs, such as the preschool story hour clinic. But no one heard him. They were all asleep. The zoo was very still until... Bibi Bobby Bobby! Bibi Bobby Bobby! Bibi Bobby Bobby! And all the animals were singing. Bibi Bobby Bobby! Bibi Bobby Bobby! Oh dear, said the elephant, and I was so sleepy. When there's a particular interest expressed by members of the community, we try to respond by having a program or a display of books on a particular subject. For example, right now hang gliding is very popular, or transcendental meditation. Backpacking is always popular. We're going to have a guitar workshop, and we have had a filmmaking workshop. All of the speakers in these programs are volunteers. One of the directions the library is taking now is towards becoming a multimedia center. It's no longer just a place to find books, but also cassettes and records and films, eventually it's videotape, all types of information in all different forms available to the public. Television and films are the universal language of today's children. Dan Wegman's job is to teach them to use these tools. The position of media specialist is a rather new animal. They have the training in both library skills and also in audiovisual skills. The new direction that traditional libraries are going is toward a media center, a resource center, or instructional material center, call it whatever you will, it's the same thing. You have both print, which is the books, and non-print, which would be things such as uh, the film loops, the videotape, making Super 8 movies. Dan Wegman's students learn the art of communication by doing, by making their own newscast, for instance. Hi, my name is Lydia Cabrera. I'm going to be talking about Stamp Club. What we do in Stamp Club is a lot of things, but right now I'm going to be we have groups here that have made films on uh, forest conservation, oceanography, making one right now on lizards. All the material is selected by the students. The media specialist's position would be one more of guidance and direction so that you can get a semi-professional result using the children as a main resource. Ever since the Bible story in which Cain killed his brother Abel, society has wrestled with a problem of capital punishment. Over the centuries, ingenious and often savage methods have been devised for punishing... Media librarian Renee McIntosh has succeeded in giving high school teachers in her school system a chance to create their own slide programs. They are very pleased with this because they can give the students exactly what they want. In towns and cities, there was no police, no courts, no trials. If a member of one group was killed, where the spirit is willing, but the treasury is weak, imagination becomes a good librarian's best resource. Sometimes it is the only resource. Renee made elementary school libraries appear literally out of nowhere. 
This one was a kitchen pantry. In another school, we had a covered hallway that served. In still another school, one half of a classroom was available. When money is no object, as at this community college, library takes on new dimensions. Here, television studios are used by the faculty to record lectures and demonstrations that can be reviewed later by the students. Calling into the council, a student can order a lecture or a taped educational program to view and study at his leisure. In forward-looking institutions like this, librarians are free to explore the many educational uses of media. Everything is here, from Shakespeare to Bach, <laughs> to rock. Librarians can be as specialized as the people they serve. Lee Magnolia is the head librarian at a large aerospace firm. The information explosion today is so incredible that in order for a company to truly stay competitive, many of them of many different sizes have their own industrial or company library. One of the problems with the information explosion is the written word itself. How do you store it all? Well, one of the ways to cope with this is, for example, film. This document is 23 pages long, yet the same document can be placed on a sheet of film very simply. And imagine what advanced technology can do today. An entire set of encyclopedias here can be reduced to the size of one plate of film. And that's pretty important because that way the size of the library doesn't get larger than the size of the company that it serves. The onrushing technology of information science must eventually change the very shape of the library. I think that in a few years, the library as we know it, a large physical facility, will disappear and we will have smaller, even storefront locations which will allow the, the librarian to get to know the community and the community to get to know what the library can do. A library is a place for sharing, a place, for instance, where local artists of all ages can display their talents. It is, above all, a people place. I think there are several characteristics that uh, an individual has to have in order to be a successful librarian. And one of them, of course, is to, to like books and to know books and to like information. But more importantly, they really have to like people. Uh, you can't be a successful librarian if you don't understand and make an attempt to understand individuals and what they need and where they're at and where they're coming from. And there are people who don't have this sensitivity and I don't think they can be good librarians. The new librarians, they are the dedicated men and women who share a common purpose to make libraries a place where all people can help themselves to the best of what the human mind has to offer, knowledge.